a, a yo, it's me, DPX. Uh, yeah, here to review uh, some movies. Not like movies that have been out for a while. I mean, kind of, but like, kind of newish movies. Kind of forgot how that's like to have new movies come out. Yeah, there have been some movies that have come out. Uh, to streaming, of course. Or, yeah. Um, this is actually before I've seen all of them. Like, I'm recording this part of the video before I've seen all of them. But, the movies are The Main Event, Mortal Kombat Legends, Scorpion's Revenge, and Extraction. Which is not even out yet by the time I'm recording this, but by the time this is up, it will be out. So, let's get right into this. Before we get started, though, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, and leave a comment. You'll be a loyal subscriber. So, we're starting off with, um, with... The main event is a movie on Netflix that released April 10th, 2020, a few weeks ago. Um, and basically what it is, is a movie where uh, it's, you have this kid named Leo Thompson who wants to be a wrestler. And he tries to become a wrestler. That's basically what it is. It basically follows like this Spider-Man story. But instead of it being Peter Parker, it's this kid, Leo Thompson, and he's also like 11. And instead of becoming a superhero, he wants to be a WWE wrestler. So he puts on this mask that he found in like some old dusty box. It gives him superpowers. It's a, it's a weird story. Um, and I can't quite say it works. Like, I the Spider-Man story, I don't think works if with like a wrestling story and there's so many just inconsistent things like you know there's a running joke in the movie that the mask smells bad which i mean it makes sense you because he found it in like some dusty old closet box but i mean throughout the whole movie he just doesn't wash it or anything because throughout the whole movie it's a running joke throughout the whole movie that the mask smells like shit so it just like just wash it and it d doesn't smell bad anymore some other things is like like another example of just that attention to detail i feel that was lost is like leo and his grandmother who are wwe fans like they go well we're gonna watch we're gonna watch raw tonight all right fine it's a wwe movie that makes sense uh, they say they're going to watch a tag team match between the New Day and the Usos, who are both SmackDown wrestlers, but whatever, maybe they can work something out but with that. They're watching it, they're saying it's Raw, but they're watching SmackDown, and they want the New Day to win and everything, and then the dad comes, and there's a little scene between Leo and his dad, and then he looks back, and then apparently that match is over, and it's now... A different segment on raw this time but like see stuff like that why should i care if you're not gonna care i mean you might say i'm nitpicking but to me that's like if you want to make a movie about something like wrestling you gotta and you want to include like little references and easter eggs like that you gotta make them like make sense don't say you're watching raw and then you're watching smackdown also, the interesting thing about wrestling is, like, the people, like, obviously it's all fake and everything. The, the way the people act, it, it, it's just characters. And it makes sense on there because that's the ridiculous nature of something you're not supposed to take seriously about wrestling. But here, like, they all act like that in this movie. And, like, no wrestler acts like a human being, but that's, like, the fun of it. But... And you're not, I see it as that's something you're not supposed to take too seriously, as in like nitpick the shit out of it. But now it's in a movie and you're expected to think that normal humans act that way now in this, in a movie, in this world. It, it just, there are a lot of things that just don't make sense in this movie. I mean, it, I wasn't offended by this movie. It did have me unironically laugh a couple times, I will admit. Um, as a as someone who knows wrestling, it has a lot of references, but doesn't really, you know, 
do them quite well. There's this one fart joke that goes on for way too long. Like, I mean, no, no, it went on for way too long. If there's anything worse than a fart joke, it's when it goes on for way too long. And what I found pretty weird as well is that they had other wrestlers in the movie, like The Miz, Sheamus, and Kofi Kingston and uh, commentators just playing themselves. But then they had Keith Lee and Otis and Mia Yim playing other characters. It's just, I don't, it's just weird the way they have that. I get, like, you got someone, it's weird when you think about it, you got somebody playing a character, playing another character. But I get, I didn't describe the plot necessarily. Basically, there's like this competition to get in this tournament. The winner gets to be a wrestler. So Leo takes his mask. Somehow, despite being short and skinny for a actual wrestler, he, his mask changes his voice. So I guess that's convincing enough that he's a, a wrestler and old enough to be one. So, he, he beats a lot of people that he shouldn't really be able to. And, spoiler alert, I guess, by the end of the movie, he's, he has to prove himself without the mask. And, yeah, he's unmasked during the middle of a match. And, see that it's an 11-year-old in a wrestling match. And no one's gonna question it. See, it's just... Well, actually... No, a lot of people questioned it in the movie, but it still went on and everything, like, okay. It doesn't make much sense to me. Anyways, um, yeah, again, I wasn't too offended by this. It did have me unironically laugh a couple times, and, you know, most of the wrestlers that were in it, either playing as themselves or other wrestlers, were really good, actually. And the one manager for the big mean bad guy... I actually don't mind a whole lot. The grandmother character was really annoying, and but despite that, I think if she was reeled in a little bit, uh, the actress is fine. But overall, the movie is kind of forgettable, and all the problems I listed are pretty big problems. But I don't know where to put this on my ranking for the best or every movie I saw this year. that I'm a long way from that, but, uh, yeah, I'll give this movie a 6.5 out of 10. It's, mm, I wasn't offended, but not something I'll probably watch again. Next up is Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. Now, this is basically the Mortal Kombat story told from Scorpion's perspective. I mean, it's the third time the story's being told, but it's from a different perspective, and, you know, you want to see Scorpion uh you want to see his perspective and everything and yeah it's about like the tournament and everything like that um and we see at the beginning like all the the lin kuei they uh they all kill scorpion's family and you're rooting for scorpion you want him to get his revenge um but then what happens is sub-zero comes and uh kills scorpion's son and then kills Scorpion, and then Scorpion's in hell, and yada yada yada. I thought this movie was actually really fun, a really fun watch. I thought, you know, it's got good action in it, um, and this is what I'd expect from a Mortal Kombat animated movie from Warner Brothers. I just want to say, yeah, you, like every year Warner Brothers, they release a new animated movie, it's usually about like Batman or Superman. This time they released a Mortal Kombat movie. During, like, right now. Thanks, Warner Brothers. I will say, this is not a movie I'd buy for $20 if I were you. It's... Maybe wait for a sale. Maybe wait for you be, to be able to rent it for, like, a couple bucks. But it's a fun time. I do have a few problems with it, though. During, like, the middle of the movie, it sort of, like leave scorpion's perspective and it focuses more on like sonya johnny cage Liu kang raiden um it sort of shifts from scorpion over to them for a good portion of the middle part of the movie and it's just 
that's not really what I came here for. I mean, this is called Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. And I came here to see Scorpion get his motherfucking revenge. Uh, yeah, much needed revenge. And we don't get that till like towards the end of the movie, which yeah, it's building up to that, but we don't get much of Scorpion in like the middle of the movie. That's my biggest problem. Also, Johnny Cage, like I get he's sort of like a comic relief character, but needs to be toned down a little bit. He was a, he got on my nerves a little bit. Like he he thought until he was getting attacked by like a Tarkardin, he actually thought it was a, a movie set and he was filming for like some sort of action movie or some shit like like I get yeah it's haha -ha funny and uh, Johnny Cage is supposed to be like an actor but I mean after a little while it just got annoying like I did not realize that you're not in a movie and this is real I get that's where the humor is from but it's basically like you're in a group chat with your friends your one friend sends a meme and it's pretty funny. And then a few days later, he sends it again, and it's pretty funny again. And he sends it again, and again, and again, and again. It just got annoying, but like, Johnny Cage didn't go the whole movie thinking that this whole thing was fake. Or, yeah. And the part where Scorpion does get his revenge, I must say, who is that satisfying? I'm pretty satisfied with this movie. Again, $20 is pretty steep for this. But, uh, do, like, rent this for, like, a couple bucks if you're interested. I'll give Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge a 7.7 .7 out of 10. And last but not least, kind of, you'll see in a bit, but, is Extraction which is produced by the Russo Brothers, uh, written by one of the Russo Brothers, directed by a first-time director, Sam Hargrave, and starring Thor, Chris Hemsworth. And basically what this movie is, is uh, Chris Hemsworth plays a character named Tyler Rake, who's like this mercenary who uh, who's in like some other country, and, you know, it... He's looking after this kid whose father is a gangster, and I don't. You see, here's the thing about this movie. I was not following the plot, like at all. In fact, most of the movie was actually really fucking boring. Like I was bored. But a good percentage of the movie is just action, and I was hooked whenever the action was, you know, present. And, yeah, you might say, if all that entertained you was action, then this movie isn't really that good overall because there's only one thing that entertained you. Well, most of the movie was just a bunch of action scenes. And I've heard uh, this movie's action game compared to uh, John Wick. And honestly, yeah, I'd say it's comparable. I've also heard this movie get compared to one of... This is a Netflix movie, so one of Netflix's other movies, Six Underground, which I didn't like that much. You see, that was boring, and there are more problems with that movie that this movie doesn't have. Whenever, like, there's action not going on, it is kind of boring, but also, like, I don't it this is such a unique creature i guess i can call it i don't fucking know um there are some really dumb scenes like um there's like what this one scene that's supposed to be like powerful and supposed to make you feel like um almost like the kid uh who chris hemsworth is looking after uh the the kid is sort of giving chris hemsworth therapy i guess you can say that which I mean, that sounds cool, but, like, then, I mean, like, it's the kid giving Chris Hemsworth therapy, it just, and it doesn't seem right, because the kid is, like, pretty two-dimensional. Honestly, though, Chris Hemsworth's performance was good. 
I never really thought he was Tyler Rake. You know, he he always he was always Chris Hemsworth in this movie. Like in the Marvel movies, he, he's Thor first and then Chris Hemsworth. In this, I didn't feel like he was fucking Tyler Rake. He he was he was Chris Hemsworth to me. Like I almost want to give this movie a bad score, but I mean. I don't know, like, the action almost saves it for me, because the action is very entertaining. I must also say the ending was strange. I don't understand what that ending was, and if I have to fucking look up uh, ending explain videos on YouTube, uh, that's kind of a problem. Maybe I'm just an idiot, but, like, uh, I, I searched up extraction review just to see what other people thought of it because i didn't i don't quite know what other people think of it uh but before i any reviews popped up a uh, video explaining the ending popped up with more views than any of the other reviews that popped up so i'm sure i'm not the only one that's wondering other than that there's not really a whole lot to say about extraction o other than also it was pretty predictable a lot of the time which i shouldn't like deduct points for that but it's sort of like the movie starts and well i, I don't want to say that but like there are certain characters that are introduced and you just know what's gonna happen with them you, you just know it i will say though i said that the ending was like strange i'm what i meant by that was like the very ending like the last scene before the credits started to roll i mean like the climax of the movie though that kind of got me because I wasn't expecting it, but other than that, yeah, there's not a whole lot to say about Extraction. Um, I give Extraction, I'd say a 7 out of 10, because it was very boring except for the action scenes, but there were a lot of action scenes. So, I don't know, it's strange. Maybe, like, I don't know, it's, I, my brain hurts, alright, I, I want to move on. So those were three movies that I've uh, just reviewed. Um, yeah, two of them are a little older. Um, one of them just came out the day I'm recording this. That is Extraction. Again, I seriously have no idea what to think of that movie. The other two, I really like Mortal Kombat. And um, while the main event wasn't terrible, it was like, I'll pass. There are four other movies I want to briefly talk about that I caught up on, uh, that I have more in-depth reviews of on Letterboxd, so I'll go in order of, like, least favorite to favorite. I don't dislike any of these four movies, though. First is Spencer Confidential, it was like this action movie that was on Netflix. Yeah, I, I was watching a lot of stuff on Netflix, but... Yeah, it was this, like, action movie with Mark Wahlberg and, uh, and Winston Duke, who is M'Baku in, uh, Black Panther, so, yeah, that's where I know him from, and it's been a while since I watched it, um, and to be honest, I can't recall much. I just remember being fucking over the top, and, uh, I, I remember, I don't know how this happened, but I remember having both ironic enjoyment and genuine enjoyment i don't i'm not even gonna try to explain that next is the invisible man i didn't review this when it came out because i didn't see it when it came out i got to see it recently though and it was it was really good um i really enjoyed it genuinely not ironically like i enjoyed it way more than i didn't but it does do a little some stupid things like there are a few things- I don't want to get into into detail. There are a few things in the movie, though, that are just really dumb, and I guess you're just not supposed to question it. And the ending is very rushed, too. But Elizabeth Moss is great, and I like the, uh, you know, I like sort of the feel of having sort of, like, the bad guy you can't see. So he can be, like, literally anywhere and attack at any moment. So, that's cool. Next up is The Willoughbys, another Netflix movie. It's uh, based off of a book. Uh, Extraction is also based off of a novel. I didn't say anything about that. But this is also based off of a book. Um, and I, I went in depth. Like, I went more in depth 
in my review on Letterbox. My Letterbox is gonna be um, in the description below. It's in the description of like all my videos, though. I don't really plug it too much, though. Um, but this movie was way better than I expected it to be. Like, honestly, what when I saw like clips or images, I thought it was hot garbage. It just looked stupid. But I heard some good stuff about it. I heard it was funny. I heard it was fun. I heard it was charming. I watched it, and I can check off all three of those things, and then some. It's a fun movie. But, uh, number one, and probably my favorite movie of the year so far, in fact, while not competing with much, though, is The Way Back. This sports drama with Ben Affleck in the main role, who's, uh, some retired, uh, basketball player who was really good but then he turned into an alcoholic and now he's uh given a job to coach a basketball team that is struggling and the people in the team don't get along very well i thoroughly enjoyed this like there are many moments that actually did make me feel like shit like it, i felt like shit at moments i don't want to get into detail I went into a lot of detail on Letterboxd with this one. So, those are some of the movies I've been watching. Um, you can see some of my reviews on Letterboxd if you want. And that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like this video, come subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.